여러분 안녕. Popular YouTuber Whitney Bay has captivated both Korean and non-Korean viewers with her fun and entertaining videos. Making a theme out of anything and everything from her daily life, she is promoting Korean culture with her charm and humor. We sit down with Whitney Bay on Heart to Heart to hear about her life in Korea and her plans for the future. joined with Whitney Bay, an American K-vlogger, content creator, YouTuber who is amazing the world with her entertaining videos on Korea. Hello and welcome to Heart to Heart, Whitney. Hello. <laughs> Thank you for having me. Uh, thanks for coming. Would you like to say hello to our viewers? Sure. Hello, everyone. My name is Whitney. I'm a YouTuber from America but living in South Korea and I'm really happy to be here today. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so once again, thank you so much for joining us thank in the you. studio. On your YouTube profile, uh -huh. your Korean YouTube channel, you described yourself as 한국에서 살고 있는 uh -huh. 미국인 크레이지한 <laughs> 여자 Whitney입니다. Yeah, which basically <laughs> translates to I'm Whitney, I am a crazy American girl mm -hmm. uh, living in South Korea. Mm -hmm. So an American girl who makes goofy videos right. and posts them up mm -hmm. on your YouTube channel. So, I mean, there are a lot of people, um, I mean, YouTubers out there, uh -huh. okay, non-Koreans that uh, live in Korea that are content creators or YouTubers. Mm -hmm. um, now, your YouTube channel tells a lot about you, your personality, and that one line does uh -huh. as well. So what would you say makes your channel different from the others that are run by non-Koreans? I think, just like you said, it's just my personality. Uh -huh. It's just me. It's just me going on, and I'm doing makeup, and uh -huh. I'm feeling at it. And it's not always about Korea. Like, mm. sometimes I'm just like, hey, I like this mascara. Let me try this mascara. Oh, okay. and if, or, like, I'll dye my hair. It's just more about a com comedy aspect, I guess. Uh -huh. So I used to make videos where it was, like, comparing Korea and America. And that was fun, but at some point I was like, I'm just going to be myself mm. and just be silly and have fun. And I think that's why the... The kids, as I call them. I think that's why the kids <laughs> like me, because I'm just like this weird girl, and I'm speaking Korean, and when I speak Korean, I use these like little voices and stuff, mm -hmm. and they're just like, who is she? <laughs> so I think maybe that's why, you know, I got some attention. Mm -hmm. When I was watching uh, some of your videos, I, I was- oh, mercy. I was like, <laughs> I wish I was a little bit like Whitney because oh, well. I'm very calm yeah, and yeah, I think yeah. I'm a very boring person. No. <laughs> um, I just find it very awkward to, I guess, be cheerful or, uh -huh. or you know, be funny sometimes. Right, right. And I'm sure there are a lot of people like me that watch your video yeah. and find it amazing to see you, you know, so joyful and cheerful. Oh. Now, um, your makeup parody videos oh, are boy. very popular. <laughs> um, they are, you know, the popular videos mm -hmm. that you post up. And where did you get the idea to parody these beauty ads? Uh -huh. uh, you've parodied Korean uh -huh. and American beauty right. ads. Right, right. Where did you get the idea? I mean, I'm a very observant person, so I would see these ads online, like social media and stuff, mm -hmm. and I'm like, this is not real. This cannot be real. So <laughs> I just kind of like to make fun of things. Uh -huh. I'm a bit of a troll, so I just started copying them and putting my own funny spin on it. Not to like, just like be a lighthearted laugh. That's all mm -hmm. this is for, so. I don't know, I'm just observant. I just see all this stuff. I'm like, are you guys serious? Are you kidding me? Like, <laughs> you're trying to sell this to me that I can do this and it's not gonna break. Like, I know it's gonna break. So that's just, I was just messing around, I but guess. But they sell. They do sell. And then buy those the products. thing is, I do those parodies and then more people buy it. And I'm like, <laughs> oh, well, that wasn't the attention, but you know, whatever. <laughs> so. Did you ever have, you know, like cosmetics companies send you their products? Oh, all the time. Yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. So they send me stuff, but it's not, it's like good quality, so I can't like, not that I'm trying to be out here like drag com dragging companies or anything uh -huh. like, like that, but they'll send me stuff. I'm like, oh, this is good. I don't know how to make a video out of it. Mm. So I'll just share like, hey, I like this product. This is good product. But yeah, a lot of people will send me stuff. <laughs> yeah, because I saw the one. This is, of course, related to the work that you do. Mm -hmm. um, it was a, a video that you shot 
um, getting your makeup done by professional makeup right. artists. Right. And that was really cool. That was amazing. That was life changing. I think I watched that video like five times. Did you? <laughs> I was trying to learn the techniques. And I was like, okay, where do I go to get these products? Ah, yeah, life changing. Mm -hmm. I just, before actually, she, the, can I, I can say her name, yeah, right? Sure. Yeah. So it was Jung Sam Samer. She's mm -hmm. like a world known uh, makeup artist, yeah. especially in Korean beauty. Uh -huh. And she actually had seen some of my videos when I was making, doing makeup tutorials uh -huh. and I was trolling. I was doing it kind of bad on purpose. And so she saw it and she didn't tell me this, but I kind of got the feeling she felt bad for me. Like, <laughs> oh, she needs my help. So <laughs> I don't know though, but um, so she reached out to me and she's like, let's work together. And seriously, it's just like, I'm so grateful to her. Like she totally changed my life. Mm. I learned how to do makeup properly mm -hmm. and it really like boosted my confidence and I learned a lot that beauty is not on the out, like it's within. Mm -hmm. And I think that because she taught me that message, I'm able to share with other people too. Because mm -hmm. I make these silly videos, but I'm just being myself. And I think people are getting more confident, like I can just be myself, like I don't have to put on a front. So. Right. <laughs> okay. <laughs> So, um, which videos are your favorites, or would you like to tell us about some of your other videos that are quite popular? Oh, uh, I don't know if, I like the hair videos. Hair videos. Even though I get a lot of criticism, I don't really care because I enjoy it. But, um, like, I'll just do my hair and try to copy K-pop idols' hairstyles. Yes, yes. They're funny hairstyles, uh -huh. not funny hairstyles, but they're unique hairstyles. Uh -huh. I mean, I don't have the right resources and I don't even have like a curling iron, so it's always a failure, but it's just fun to, you know, try to like mimic something else. Mm -hmm. So I like those videos and when I'm like dyeing my hair and I just, everything goes wrong. But I think my most popular video, even though on YouTube the views aren't as, as much, mm -hmm. but there's a video where I cut my bangs on accident and that kind of went viral in Korea. <laughs> and so even now, like when people see me, they'll be like, oh, <laughs> I'm like, oh my gosh. <laughs> so I think that's like my biggest video and I like it too. Another series that I, I found quite interesting quite uh, was the uh, miniature versus the actual oh size, my wasn't it? Goodness. Yeah. <laughs> that was an accident. <laughs> what do you mean it was an accident? I did not expect that to blow up the way it did. <laughs> Oh, so total, like just one day, mm -hmm. so like I make miniature something like miniature ramen yes. and I'll eat a big ramen. Uh -huh. So one day I had no ideas, but I had the miniature ramen pack. Uh -huh. And so I was like, oh, let me just make this. So I made it and I was like, wait, what if I eat a big ramen? So I made a big ramen, I uploaded it. It got like maybe 20, 30,000 views wow. at first. And I was like, okay, you know, whatever. And then I checked back a month later and it's like, Three million. I was like, wait, what's going on? <laughs> and so now I think it's like over 11 million views or something. Mm. And I don't understand why people like that video. <laughs> it was very cute. I, I watched the uh, the ice cream one. Oh, that was really funny. Oh, that was like a dream come true. Yeah, that was cute. Just was eating funny. all that ice cream. Oh, I've always wanted to. Do did that. you actually finish that ice cream? I did. You did? Yeah, I did. I never. I don't like to throw away the food, so I finish it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that ice cream was like. I know it was really. It was a mountain. It was. <laughs> So yeah, I finished it. <laughs> so are you into K-pop as well? I am. Yeah? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I'm not like deep in it, but uh, I know who everyone is uh, for the most part. Right. Because there was a video that you did um, shot during the fashion week in Korea. Oh, right. So you shot a whole bunch of people, you know, just... Oh, wait. Yeah. What, 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 did, what did you see? Uh, <laughs> there was a moment that's kind of embarrassing for me. <laughs> <laughs> Which moment are you talking about? Because... Okay, so you know, fashion week, everyone's just like kind of standing around and enjoying yeah. it. But at one point, my favorite K-pop artist uh -huh. that came out. I saw that. Oh, you saw? Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I had a moment. Everybody has their moments, and I was just fangirling. I was—I've never been that close to them, so I was like, I cried a little bit. Oh, I mean, a little bit, but yeah. So I do like some of the older people, mm -hmm. and the new people—they're cool too. So. Yeah. There was a part where you were like, "Oh, he looked at yeah. me." <laughs> <laughs> like I said, I cried? had a moment. I had a moment. <laughs> oh. Now, before we actually started, um, you know, shooting this program, uh -huh. shooting Heart Heart, I asked you uh, about your favorite videos. 
And oh, you mentioned really? something about how your favorite aren't actually the viewer's favorite. Right. It's always like that. Right? <laughs> For YouTube. Why is that? It's like something you really work hard on. You put all your work into it and you're like, okay, people are going to love this. Uh -huh. I love this. I poured my heart and soul into it. And people are like, eh, it's all right. <laughs> like, what? I work so hard on this. But they just... I don't know what it is. That's the thing with YouTube. You don't know what people are really going to like. Right. Things will just take off and you have no reason why. Mm -hmm. Like you just, just, it is what it is. But for me, I think I really like the videos I make with my mom because mm. it's like a memory I can always yeah. kind of have. And I think people like those too, but they prefer like other stuff like uh -huh. way more. The goofier ones? Yeah. Yeah. When I'm hurting myself <laughs> or if I'm eating something really spicy, they love that. Or cutting your bangs? Yeah. When I'm, if I'm like causing harm to myself, they like it. <laughs> 구독자 살찔기 생각하는 이유 댓글 읽을 때 감동을 받아요 직접만 하면 내 영상 기억 안해 매우 큰 행동 가라네 보여줘 하지마 내 행동 얼굴 얼굴 해 애인 원하면 알지마 날 따라하면 안돼내 구독자 세상에 제일 귀 좋은 구독 할머니 가진 모두 다내 구독자 세상에 제일 귀 좋은 구독 할머니 가진 모두 다내 구독자 하시면 돌파 감사해요 오십만 더 넘어가 감사해요 정말 사랑해요 You are running two mm -hmm. YouTube channels. One is in Korean yes. and the other is in English. Uh -huh. So, of course, you have Korean subscribers and non-Korean subscribers. Right. How are they different? Uh, <laughs> How are they different? Um, well, I think the non-Korean subscribers, they're very curious about Korean culture, mm. but they also like K-pop more. I, uh, that's what I've seen. So if I do something about like K-pop, they eat it up. They love it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but the Korean subscribers, I guess it's because it's their everyday life. They don't really care about it as much. So even if I show me doing something, you know, in Korea, they're like, yeah, we already know. Like, it's not as, you know, entertaining. So uh, that's why I do have the second channel. So the uh, for our Western, the non-Korean audience mm -hmm. can kind of enjoy more Korean culture stuff. So I think Korean audience, they just want to see something that's funny and mm -hmm. they enjoy. But a lot of people do also want, in Korea, they want me to try Korean foods. Like try chicken feet, try, oh. um, I don't know, just like unique, pondegi. Uh, like try right. all these Korean foods. Um, so that's a little bit different too. Mm -hmm. so. Have you done I a lot have. of like food? I can't do it anymore. No. I really can't. I <laughs> You've done too, too many? I did bundegi, I uh -huh. did all of the spicy ramens, I did the spicy topoki, uh -huh. and my stomach just can't take it anymore. I'm done, I'm tapping out. So you can't do spicy food? <laughs> Not anymore. Uh -huh. I think I kind of messed up my stomach, if I'm being honest, because uh -oh. I right. ate that spicy stuff so much. Right. It was entertaining, I guess. I mean, these are Kore you know popular Korean food. Mm -hmm. like, topoki is basically mm -hmm. Korean rice cake. Right. It's in like a very spicy red, you know, hot, mm -hmm. hot sauce, which yeah. is very popular among Koreans. Right. Uh, bondegi, how did you describe bondegi to your... A silkworm. Silkworm. Yeah, it was mm. awful. <laughs> it was, I did not enjoy that at all. I mean, I did it, but that video was tough. Like, it just, <laughs> it doesn't match my taste. And there's nothing wrong with that. Like, I, I can't eat it. You can't eat it either? No. Yeah. It's, I, I've tried once and I... Yeah, no, so you know. It it's, work <laughs> it's tough to eat that, but... I did it for the experience and mm -hmm. I was curious, but I just won't do it again, so. <laughs> was there a, a Korean food that you tried for the first time mm -hmm. for your channel and, and you just absolutely fell in love with? Ooh, I mean, I guess the snacks. The I snacks. did a video where I tried a bunch of Korean snacks uh -huh. and some of the snacks are so good, like pretzels with the, se the yang yum, the uh -huh. seasoning, uh -huh. I don't know what that's called. Seasoning? Uh, Seasoning, <laughs> I guess, yeah. It's really good. Um, and also they have like chicken snacks. Ah. And I thought that was really good because mm -hmm. we don't really have that in America. So I enjoyed that. How do you feel about Korea? I like it. I mean, I'm still here. This is the thing. If I didn't like Korea, I wouldn't be here. I would just go home. <laughs> I heard Korea is a hard place for foreigners to live in because of cultural differences in society and being homesick. Yeah. You're right. <laughs> You're right. Um, how do I manage it? 
Yes, it is very difficult. You know what? You gotta be a tough cookie. I matured. I grew so much in Korea. I never knew I could grow this much. I never knew I could change so much as a person. But being in Korea has changed me a lot. And a lot of us things to the good community I've been in and um, so many good people that I've met. And also, I've had a lot of bad experiences here. And that has made me stronger too. So you just gotta be willing to grow and learn from your mistakes and just be a tough cookie. That's what I would say. You've been in Korea, is it for the past seven years now? Yeah, actually, I think Longer? Like this week is seven years. Oh, seven years. Okay. This week marks seven years. Mm -hmm. Maybe today. Yeah, it's been a while. Wow. Well, yeah, <laughs> it, it has been a while. So you've been in Korea for seven years. But what brought you to Korea in the first place for the very first time? Why did you come to Korea? Um, when I was in college, I had a lot of Korean friends. My roommate was Korean, but just um, my classmates were Korean. So I was around the culture a lot. I heard the language all the time. Uh -huh. So of course I was just curious to see it myself. And I was like young and adventurous. So um, I came here during summer mm -hmm. and just to have fun and hang out with my friends. And I just fell in love with it. I was like, okay, Korea, this is, this is the hot spot. Like I just really loved it. And then I went back and I graduated. And I was like, I still want to explore Korea, and I'm just so curious about Korean culture and language, so I want to go back and spend more time there and learn more. Mm. And then I came back, and I'm still here. Yeah, you <laughs> just started, decided to stay in yours. What would you say, what do you like most about living in Korea? Um, I can honestly say I'm still very fascinated by Korean culture. Mm. So even now, I'm always learning new things. Mm -hmm. And I take Korean classes still because Although I'm learning the language, I just like to hear from my teacher about her experiences when she was younger. Uh -huh. And I just think it's so interesting because it's so different from the way I grew up. Mm -hmm. And I just think Korean culture is really special. So I like just learning. Mm -hmm. And I'm trying to read more. My reading's got a lot better so I can actually read stuff yeah. and understand and just talk to people from different you know, ways of life. And, it's just been really eye-opening for me. Mm -hmm. So that's what I really like. Oh, so you're still taking Korean classes. Oh, yeah. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> for how many years have you been taking Korean classes? Too long. <laughs> like 10 years, over 10 years. No wonder, because yeah. your Korean is amazing. Well, thank you. Yeah. I have a long way to go, but I am still learning. Mm. Now, a lot of people recognize you on the streets. I mean, you did tell us about how a six-year-old or, you know, a kindergarten kid actually, you know, ran up to you and said, Whitney. Mm -hmm. So how does it feel when people actually, you know, come up to you, approach you on the streets? Um, it's really nice because uh, I don't, I see their comments and stuff, but I have no face to the comments and mm -hmm. the names. So it's nice to see them in person and um, shake their hand or hug them. And their faces are so cute, too. And so it's just nice to get a face of who's actually watching my videos. And they're just so sweet. Mm -hmm. I really, I view them as my kids. Uh -huh. When I see them, like, we joke around and stuff. Like, I love those kids, so. I mean, and just the older people too as well, mm -hmm. but yeah. So of course it feels great when people. I mean, sometimes it will be like a chain, react, like dominoes falling, because uh -huh. like one person will see me and we'll take a picture and then a bunch of people will come. Yeah. And then that is a little overwhelming, mm -hmm. but. At the same time, I'm happy to see them. Mm -hmm. So it's also really weird because when people recognize me, uh -huh. they're really shy at first. So I can hear them whispering about me. So because I made the video about the bangs, I'll like kind of see from the you mm -hmm. know my side view. They'll be like, oh. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, you guys, I can see you. Or um, a lot of times I'll go somewhere like I'll, I got my nails done, and uh -huh. afterwards she was like. I'm like, yeah, that's me. Like, it's kind of because they don't. I don't know that they know me. And uh -huh. then at the very end, they're like, actually, Young Sun Terrible be so. I'm like, oh my god, <laughs> like so embarrassing. Yeah. Yeah. This, you, this shows how popular you are in Korea. See? I don't know. Yeah, you are very, very popular. Ooh, oh, oh, I'm tired. <laughs> I'm so tired. Okay. Ah. 
what we have here is a very healthy Korean meal. Ah! It's very good. We went back to <laughs> high school. Beautiful. We're a kid. People love us. <laughs> <laughs> watching thank you for your support <laughs> love you guys <laughs> bye it's been seven years since Whitney Bay first came to Korea since then she's been spreading Korea's cultures to subscribers around the world with her humorous yet informative videos we are rooting for this wildly popular youtuber Whitney Bay who's enjoying a big fan base of roughly 610,000 subscribers. Now, there are many people, you know, that aspire to become a content creator. They want to become YouTubers, mm -hmm. uh, you know, vloggers. Do you have any advice for them? Uh, you have to do it because you want to and because you think it's fun. If you're not having fun, you will probably not make it. Uh -huh. You got to do it because you want to make that content. It's content that you want to watch. Otherwise, I mean, even if you get a lot of views at first, mm -hmm. at some point, it's just going to kind of fall apart. You have to really be passionate about it because you want to. And mm -hmm. do it as a hobby. Don't do it as a job. I mean, at some point, it might get to a job. But at first, do it just for fun as a hobby. And you will go a lot further. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. that's And don't put all your eggs in one basket. <laughs> mm -hmm. You definitely have to, even like the big YouTubers, it's not just YouTube, they do brand deals, they do, you know, they make their own merchandise, uh -huh. you have to kind of be willing to spread yourself, so. Yeah, so it's a difficult job. It's hard. Yeah. YouTube, I mean, I think, to be honest, YouTube is a lot of luck. Mm -hmm. You just got to be lucky, and you have to work hard, mm -hmm. so those two things. Do you have to prepare in any way to actually get started? No, so for the longest time, I filmed a lot of videos on my cell phone. Uh -huh. I didn't have any oh. um, nice camera. For like two years, I filmed on my cell phone. Mm -hmm. So you don't even need the best stuff. Just use what you have. Like, people want good content. And if the content is there, they won't really care about the quality as mm -hmm. long as it's good content. And even now, sometimes I still use my phone. So it's just, you don't have to, like, spend all this money. If you have an idea, mm -hmm. make it and put it out there. Okay. So that's what I would suggest. Mm -hmm. Great advice. <laughs> Um, you did briefly talk about what you hope to do in the future in terms of like, you know, a new series, uh -huh. but uh, could you tell us about your future goals or dreams? Uh, I definitely, definitely want to do some series showing things that interest me in Korea. Mm -hmm. So I am working on it now and I guess for now it will be a small scale, but I'm hoping it can be something big and I can maybe have like a show on Netflix and like showing like this is Korea and you know, just trying on, like, a couple of weeks ago, I tried on the traditional school uniforms. Uh -huh. And then I cooked with a monk. And then recently, me and my friends did a friendship um, photo, for, uh, photo shoot. Mm -hmm. So just these kind of things that people do in Korea, I want to kind of show to the world. Mm -hmm. So I would love, that's, like, a big dream of mine. I would love to do something like that. And then if there's opportunities in TV, in mm -hmm. Korean comedy shows or something, it would be fun to kind of dabble in that. But uh -huh. we'll have to see. <laughs> All right, I think our time is up. So I'd like to thank oh. you once again for joining us today. I had so much fun. Thank you so much. I wish much. we it had like fun. two more hours to yeah. on the show. But um, yeah, I uh, want to thank you on behalf of, you know, our, our Korean viewers out there for uh, letting the world, letting your subscribers and viewers uh, learn about Korea uh, mm -hmm. and about our culture. Um, My pleasure. Yes, thank you so much for sharing <laughs> and for coming today thank uh, you. to share your story. Thank you so much. 감사합니다. Thank you. 감사합니다. <laughs> <laughs>